Hi, welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. Uh, my name is Todd Kuski. I'll be your host. On the show, we have uh, Jake Russell, who is a Libertarian activist out of LA County. We also have uh, J Justin, who is affiliated with uh, Yale and also the LA County Libertarian Party. And we also have uh, Josh Smith, who is uh, on the LNC, and he also has an announcement to make. Um, oh, the announcement? You want me to announce? I'll be running for chair of the, Lib of the Libertarian Party of California. So hopefully we can, uh, we can win that election and, and get this state moving forward. Right on. All right. So uh, our first topic we want to talk about today is, I, I don't know if anybody at home has is, is, uh, seen it recently, but the uh, Gillette's you know, controversial ad uh, pushing more of a PC agenda and the uh, Me Too movement. I, I mean, what, what are your thoughts on, on that? Oh, boy. Uh, look, at the end of the day, my thoughts about it, I wasn't, I wasn't particularly offended about the ad. Mm -hmm. uh, the ad was basically a, a giant anti-bullying ad. Uh, you know, if, if you haven't seen it, it's got two kids fighting at a barbecue with a bunch of dads standing around saying boys will be boys. It's got a guy who goes to cat call a woman walking down the street and uh, another guy stops. Whoa, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think I think that there's some merit maybe to, to both sides of that. Uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, anybody can learn to be a better person. Uh, but I don't necessarily think that being masculine or being a man or doing things that men have done for you know, generations is bad. You know, I want to go to the gym and work out, mm -hmm. and I want to. I want to talk to the pretty lady walking down the road. And, so, you know, so what's so. the razor have to do with it? Well, that's the thing. <laughs> it, it doesn't you're, offend my, me. And this is the part. Just, it doesn't offend me. But my favorite part about this is, is that it is a, it is a capitalist corporation. Uh, Procter Gamble owns Gillette, and they are marketing to people who are generally anti-capitalist <laughs> to buy their product. And the best part about that is. I could go buy the men's disposable razors right now for about eight dollars, but the in pink for the women thirteen dollars. Oh, just so. <laughs> yeah. Well, wait, who's the who's a hypocrite yeah, there, right? Yeah. So what what what's the point of the commercial? Like, like it's you supposed to be use a, woman, a Gillette, you know? It's supposed razor? to say that, that men are uh, uh, their masculinity is toxic uh, uh, because you're manly. Uh, it, it's more of an aggressive standpoint, and that, that's kind of the general uh, belief that people are saying or criticizing it for. Well, I think uh, that, I think what happened with Procter Gamble or, or Gillette, one of the two, their marketing execs. You know, you know, I, I tried to shave. You know, a yeah. couple Did days ago. I'm not shaving. I, I, I don't remember who I used, but now, now I'm just not going to shave because everybody's well, talking no, here's about what, it. Here's what I think. It's kind of a useless topic. I think you know? the market execs at Gillette saw the success of using a, a, a social justice narrative uh, to push their product that Nike had. And they wanted to ride their coattails and do something similar, and so they did. They saw this, you know, in the wake of the Me Too movement and all, all these accusations flying around. They wanted to put out something that it kind of vilifies an, a majority of men. It's not all men because there are some guys who do the right thing, uh, but they wanted to they wanted to kind of kind of open people's eyes, I guess. But really, what they did was they pissed off a lot of people, um, and then they have people who are typically anti-capitalist now buying their product. <laughs> uh, that just I, I've got so many other things going on just in a county and a state and everybody's all walking around on you know Facebook and YouTube like oh this commercial oh it's it's just no like, what, are you, what like, are your thoughts on, on it Justin it's like they assume that only men shave and then they also <laughs> they also assume that only men are going to act terribly sexually towards women right. and not the other way around of course I, I I would I would think that's in a majority, but it's no, not trust like it me. I'm in, like, I'm in some Facebook groups, man. It's not just women, uh, or ju not just men. Trust yeah. me, there yeah. are there are women say nasty things about men to yeah. other women. All yeah, the time. and a lot of us like we have to learn. We have to you know like we a lot of us say like things that we've like we regret, and it's like if you know if I had said that now, you know it would be kind of terrible. So we all learn to, to some extent, and there's some of us who who do need help with sure. with those things. So. Yeah. So and I, yeah, I think and maybe like, maybe they were in the right uh, by, by bringing up some of these issues. They're trying to say, hey, you guys, let's stand up and, and show women that we are not you know a bunch of pigs. Uh, we, we are we do care about women. We do respect them. And and maybe that was the point of the ad. Maybe the ad, but we're, we're taking it the wrong direction. Um, it, it did seem a little. I, I, the only part that in there that I think bothered me 
was the whole broad bringing up the the, the masculinity of how that's that's toxic right. or anything i think i think that's the only part that that at all would be yeah i don't think there's toxic ma- masculinity or toxic femininity i think there's toxic actions and i think there's toxic people and i think you know, if we're nothing in, to do with a razor well exactly <laughs> well in, in, in an age where where we're constantly trying to vilify one side of an argument there's bad people in every race, in every gender, in every sexual orientation, Correct. and you know we're we're constantly trying to pigeonhole an entire spectrum of people into one thing. And I think that that I think that the, this Gillette ad uh, kind of it kind of shows that you know, and it, it kind of and and it was kind of had that that agenda that that most men do this these things, and it's like. <laughs> It's like, sure, I barbecued in the backyard and watched two kids <laughs> wrestle around on the grass before. Absolutely. Why, why wouldn't I have? You know? I feel like they could have done great with just the second half of that. <laughs> like, it would have gotten the point across. They wouldn't have had and they could anyone have had, against have the production crossed. <laughs> so, so yeah. how many times have you guys heard somebody mention and talk about this in, in just a brief period of time? Because I really think the ad was solely so people sit around and talk about this. Well, I got stuff like I mean, yeah, government. They're, they're I got, getting a bunch of publicity right now. You're I, right. <laughs> right. I've got government Trademark. shutdowns going on yeah. all over. I've got all these other things going on. And it, it, it's it's basically a razors. distraction. We're talking about razors. <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. Like We're talking about razors. And it's that, true. <laughs> it's true. But, you know, it's it's it started a narrative. And now there's a another fire that's been fueled for us to argue about. And people love to argue. And well, it's it, we talked about this earlier. The tribalistic mentality of people is, is inflaming every day. And this ad inflames that tribalistic mentality. Well, then people need to be more inflamed about why my government's trying to shut down and things like that. No, let them shut down. Let them go away. Well, the, they're not <laughs> no. going away. No, no, no. So, no, they're still taking your money. Exactly. <laughs> if they want to shut down and go away and just leave me alone, that, that's fine. But right now they're like, hey, yeah, we're sitting on the couch watching yeah. Scooby-Doo over here eating cereal. And, but we're still taking your money. Yeah, but we're, we're still taxing We're just you. not paying our employees. Right, right. Exactly. Well, I mean... I mean <laughs> Since we're on the topic, I mean, what what have the effects of government shutdown? Is that negatively bothering us? I mean, I still I don't feel if like they, anything's really. If they're if they're taxing us and they're not paying their employees, that that means they're paying less, which means it's good for our budget. Actually, <laughs> now I I, I see is what you're saying, the but the problem is, is they actually have to pay them back. So all the days that they're right. not going to work. Yeah, there's a there's a back pay. So okay. there's a back pay. So unfortunately, okay. that, that I, I wish it was like that because that would be awesome. But I did hear that it wouldn't be awesome for the people working for the government. No, well, and I heard there's a lot of there's a lot of TSA agents who are leaving. Yeah, you know, yeah. and that's hey man, the the more of you that leaves, the better. Trust me. If you want to not have to worry about your job anymore, stop working for the public sector. Right. Yeah. I mean, T- the TSA advertises on pizza, pizza boxes for jobs, so <laughs> it's not like they have the best candidates. Or- <laughs> yeah, the majority. They say the majority of the TSA uh, agents are college students, hmm. uh, and probably because they advertise on pizza boxes, which I understand, and probably like touching my balls. So. Yeah, there's no <laughs> doubt about that. That's why the only only the ugly one, only, only the ugly people should go from TSA. <laughs> I just think that TSA is completely unnecessary. Uh, airports should be paying for their own security. Period. That's, that's just how it should be. Uh, the TSA is an unneeded thing. They have caught exactly zero ter- terrorists since their inception. Zero. They literally have not caught one. And in fact, one with a shoe bomb got through TSA and onto a plane. <laughs> Recently, another lady got through uh, TSA with a gun, I believe. Uh, a friend of mine got through TSA with a taser. They, they don't stop the terrorists at all. Yeah, so, so you would agree, and I'm just, I'm just going to throw this out there. That possibly privatizing things would not only basically, I don't know, have people like keep their jobs, things like that, but would also kind of give more of a leeway to kind of give a more structure for what they're actually supposed to be there for. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Privatize all things, man. I, that's that, that's yeah. how I feel. The only thing about, about privatization, while I do support it, is the, is uh, because I've I've flown a lot and I do like the consistency. So we can still have consistency with privatization with uh, standards like APA format is for mm-hmm. like for scientific research. Uh, but I I'd like you know well at, at least we kind of secure. There that actually is uh, a standard. So uh, I I took a uh, private. Airplane recently um, went through went through yeah I know like, gosh, I was a private jet but uh, you know I went, went went through security but it was a private security uh, and, and they made it very cl- very clear uh, that they had to still follow all the same laws and rules of TSA but it didn't have to deal with having to go through an actual TSA there was no 
pat down. I, I mean, it was through a, a private corporation, so it's not like they, they needed to do uh, check us. But I mean, they certainly would be able to do a lot better than I think TSA. Uh, and they were being paid. I mean, it wasn't like you didn't have somebody who wasn't being paid. Like these people were being privately funded, and and uh, it works just as good. And they have to follow. They have to do the same stuff that the TSA does. There's nothing different. You want to know how you keep your standards? I'll tell you how you keep your standards. When an airport is worried about being when an airport is worried about being sued because they let something bad happen on one of their flights, that's where you get your standards. Because right now, you can't sue the TSA. No one can sue the TSA. I mean, you could, but you yeah, can't take that to the Supreme and Court the and sue the federal government. Also, the technology is never going to be updated, pretty no, much. No. Because of the Have you ever gone to any, any .gov website and <laughs> asked me, tell me the last time it was updated? They don't update their technology. Not to mention it costs like a billion dollars to develop it. Have you ever been to a federal government building? They still got the green carpets from like 1974. The, the, the problem is, is that the government doesn't have any, the federal government doesn't have anybody to ask, uh, answer to. I used to be a federal contractor and I worked inside of Western federal lands. They literally built the roads, okay, in national parks. And I was, it's where I learned most of my maintenance, uh, you know, what my blue collar trade work there, right? And I was told to do things that were illegal for me to do without a license, without an electrician's license, without an HVAC license. But because they don't answer to OSHA, they don't answer to anybody, I was able to do those things and no one could say anything to me. The, the federal government has no oversight. They have no oversight. So they don't have to, they don't have to worry about being sued for some, an issue on an airplane. Mm -hmm. and so you want standards and you want good standards and you want good quality of work, then you let the, the, the airports handle their own uh, security because then they have to worry about being sued for something wrong happening on a flight. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't uh, no argument? Out of it. No, no argument. I love it. <laughs> no, I thought no. this was called counterpoint. <laughs> oh, 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 well, you know, since you like that, I'm just, I'm going to have to go against my views, you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay. Well, now I'm, now I'm for the TSA. Oh, oh, well, oh, 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 uh -huh. <laughs> Now you're for the TSA. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like the effects of the government is, is uh, uh, the government shut down. How long has the government been shut down? What is oh, it? Several weeks now. Three yeah. weeks? Oh, almost, a month. Almost. almost a month. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, uh, it is the largest shutdown, but uh, I mean, we were learning that a lot of these things still happen. We're able to uh, take care of ourselves without it. Um, but unfortunately, it does cost a lot of money. Uh, um, so this may just be the smart aleck in me, but since the government shut down, all those new laws that just kicked in on like January 1st or, you know, still whatever. Valid. So like, can we just sweep those back somewhere? <laughs> that would be great, know? wouldn't it? I mean, like, you, yeah, you we need we need, we need to have a state government shut down, actually. Do you I, know how many people have turned in their bump stocks? Oh, oh I'm sure so many. <laughs> about about 1,200 people. Oh, oh really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's uh, out of I lost the, mine in a boating accident. Thousands? Yeah, I, I don't have any guns. I lost <laughs> all boating accidents. Oh, you lost yours in your hunting accident? Bo boating accident. Boating. Oh, boating accident. It was the same boat, actually. In the bottom of a lake that's not there anymore. Uh, the lake got buried, actually. Yeah, yeah, the little, little pond they filled boat. It, in. it was so, a man-made lake. They filled it in. Oh, okay. Bump stocks, bump stocks. Oregon's new law proposal here. I mean, yeah, SB uh, 501. Um, anybody want to tell me how that makes any sense at all? So let me explain for, for the viewers at home. Uh, SB uh, 501, which is a proposal which has not been passed yet, it's in Oregon right now. Um, it is basically going to make it so you cannot have more than a five round magazine. Uh, in any weapon, so it's not just magazines, but any gun cannot carry more than five rounds. So that includes a your revolver, your six shooter, can't have more than. Yeah, there's no revolver provision. Yeah. So all. so basically, the, all your revolvers are illegal, uh, and then also you cannot buy more than twenty rounds uh, per month. You have a twenty round limit. How are you supposed to go shooting with twenty rounds? I mean, I shoot twenty. So do they sell? Do they sell twenty rounds at a time? Yeah, they, they sell a box 50, of twenty yeah. rounds, but I yeah, go you do my box yeah, of twenty time. rounds, and you know that, that's like. Two magazines it's gonna be like it's gonna be like, like the, yeah. have the eight curtains where they cut them in half and some at the dollar store. It's gonna be like that with the box. <laughs> well, I mean, we, okay. So I don't know if you guys do any kind of target shooting. I mean, hunting, yeah, twenty rounds, yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah, you go. Like, to the, I go to the range. Whatever. I dump twenty rounds in, in a minute. It, right. <laughs> I mean, if, if you do any kind of with competition shooting, you're practicing with at least three hundred rounds. Oh, you know, at least, at, at least, yeah. and that minimum once a week. So your wrist and arm are sore. Right. I mean, that's just kind of, well, I mean, not completely sore. I mean, you kind of got to stay in tune, but yeah. So twenty rounds. I mean, okay, let's go. You know, to an organ show, and you know, we're gonna watch a three gun competition. Bam! All right, that was the fastest time anybody's done. Yeah. Like, what kind of show is that? 
Yeah, it's crazy. I, I, I honestly don't think that this, this bill is going to pass in order. I don't think so yeah. either, but, I mean, it's still a but scary a, thought to think about. This is Kate Brown. I mean, Kate Brown, this guy's Kate Brown written all over it, all over it. <laughs> and she, you know, she... She's been looking to try and take guns in Oregon for a long time. I, I lived in Oregon for the last seven years, and you can open carry in Oregon. It's great. You yeah. Know? I, was I thought Oregon was great. And then, and then yeah, and or, I think Oregon is great right now other well, than this. They, they, have a, they, have no, they have no sales tax, which is great. I, so yeah, for a long time, right. I actually I, – I lived the libertarian dream for a while. I lived in Vancouver, Washington, which is right – I know across. about that place. Yeah, so Vancouver, Washington is right across the, the, the bridge and river from, from uh, Portland, Oregon. And so there's no state tax in Washington. Mm-hmm. And there's no sales tax in Oregon. So I did all yeah. my electronics and purchasing and everything in Oregon. And I did all my working and living in Washington. Yeah. It, was like, great, it was a I'm great, it was the greatest libertarian dream. In the future. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Except that now, you know, uh, Washington's talking about implementing some state tax and Oregon's talking about implementing sales tax. And they're trying to take your guns to where you can only have five rounds. I don't even, I've never owned a gun that has five rounds. I don't even know what the, we can, at least in California, we can have 10 rounds. What's going on? Yeah, I mean, when California becomes a better gun state, <laughs> you've got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like, problem. seriously, I mean, we, my worst... Well, oh, go ahead, go ahead. You're, you're, you're making a law that makes no sense. Or you're, you're trying to propose a law where, I mean, literally, did you just wake up one morning and go, okay, like, this sounds great. Why don't you just completely go against guns and be done with it? Yeah, they're, like, well, they're, they're doing two things here. They're creating a black market for guns. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt about it because when they they tell you you can't do your business in the light anymore, now it goes. Because a lot of those revolvers have been in the family for a while. Yeah, I'm not getting rid of not getting rid of my great 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 grandpa from the Civil War's revolver. I'm just not doing it right. And then and then uh, they're also now criminalizing thousands and thousands of law-abiding citizens. Right. I mean, let's just let's just make you know every everywhere a new jail. You know, we we can all just you know go. I mean, no. it, and then plus you're gonna have you're, they're gonna be like California where they're gonna try to check people when they're coming over the border because all you gotta do is now it's it's weird you're gonna go you can go to uh, well I guess it wouldn't work in California but you go to another state and you just buy ammo and come back over to Oregon I mean well no you can't do that in California now yeah, because you, can't you do know because they. They ask you. For forbid that, you know, you have a whole hundred rounds yeah. that you're coming they across a, they state ask you because you, you went across, hunting right? or something. Yeah. And they're like, and they're they like, do a, as a fruit check. Right. Yeah, fruit check. Fruit check, do you have any ammo now? I think it's a new <laughs> thing, right? Is, and you're like, you're like gonna be? ammo, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. What's I've never that? heard of the ammo before. <laughs> Well, I but I do have an apple. I mean, I just, <laughs> oh man, the right. apple's gonna ruin it. Yeah. Man. <laughs> There's that to search your car. My worst fear about this is people like, and I don't have a lot of. Uh, a lot of experience with this, obviously, but people who hunt for their food because maybe they want uh, better food than what they're given at the at the grocery mm-hmm. market, and they run out of rounds to feed their family. Like you can't, you even one shot getting a kill every day. Yeah. You can't feed your family, every especially day. if you're a, if you're a bad shot. <laughs> Don't worry, they haven't taken the butter knives yet. Yeah, <laughs> they're working on it though. I'm sure it's coming. Um, Justin, I, I know. Uh, do, do you? I believe you had some views in the past and stuff. Uh, if you don't mind commenting on, on uh, guns, I mean, I mean, you're pretty new in, into uh, uh, being the pro gun movement. Um, can you tell me, mind tell me, talking a little bit about your experiences? I'm always going to be new to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I honestly. I think a lot of the arguments that got me to be anti-gun back in the day were were arguments more about how we're going to fund certain things. Uh, and another thing is just I wasn't very into politics then. So, so, I, but I, like honestly, that's that's pro- probably why I don't know very much about why I was anti-gun is because I don't we didn't really have so an it's simply like a lack of knowledge, yeah. like like you were mis- almost like misled into. Yeah, I feel like it's almost like default to be Democrat if you, if. You know, like if you don't know anything, you, you, you don't just know anything. If yeah. you don't know anything, you're a Democrat. Yeah, that's how. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's actually the horse now. <laughs> Bazinga! Actually, as you were saying, like there are a lot of them are centrists. If the Democrats are, you know, like if their party is centered around being centrist, then that that is going to just include a lot of people who don't know what they want to do right. or like no, don't know where they. Well, stand. I think a lot of the anti-gun sentiment comes from a lack of knowledge about guns. Yeah. As well, you know. Well, and, and now Justin is definitely on, uh, on our side side of it and stuff, uh, and. and I I think that was what through education i mean yeah, yeah um I, I think back when we first met I, I i showed you some of my firearms and yeah and then uh, i let you shoot a couple of them and nice that's and now they're underneath underneath felt the, the power <laughs> now now they're in a, a river somewhere yeah they're in a river oh, or they're, buried somewhere they're in canada <laughs> in a river <laughs> canadian river the canadian the river canadian river there you go. with the canadian there you go. Bisque. <laughs> hey, so 
that's that's funny that you say that. I you know I I've never been anti-gun, uh, but I joined the military when I was 18 years old and had a gun in my hands. You know, I had a handgun in my hands before it was legal for me to have a handgun outside of the military. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, you know, I've I've always had a little bit of knowledge of guns. And I mean, even growing up in Antioch, everybody had guns. You mm-hmm. know, when I was a kid, back in the day, they didn't have all these laws in California, and right. we'd go shoot at the train tracks. You know, <laughs> and so it's. Uh, you know, I, I think growing up around guns and, and being comfortable with a gun in the house, it really changes that anti-gun sentiment. So what was the trigger that kind of flipped you, would you say? You. <laughs> <laughs> Education. Good job, Good job. Good job. You kind of just, like, we were just, like, talking, and, and, I, and I kind of, like, voiced all my concerns. I was surprised I remembered all of them. I can hardly remember all of my concerns about those things. And then you just kind of, like... He's destroyed all of it. And I'm like, oh, oh, well, I guess I guess Facts I programmed. And logic. So, so would it be fair to say that knowledge is one of the things that was lacking solely because I mean, there, there's always been propaganda since I was a kid that you know, firearms are bad, some form of way, this or that, and I mean, ever since I was a child, you know, I, I had a BB gun, I had a pellet gun, I had you know whatever. So I was never kind of lacking in that knowledge I, i'm kind of lacking in other knowledge where you know coming and talking to people and really actually getting information is what's really settling some of my personal issues you know the land airspeed of an unladen swallow no african so i'm swallow. gonna i'm gonna have to work on that all there right you go. but but i might so you're be scared anti, about you're it anti african swallow then. <laughs> yes i am you're, yes. a, bird, you're a bird racist yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all those thing birds that is. yep <laughs> Have you guys heard about this 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 movement where they're saying since the the federal government shut down they haven't seen any birds? Have you heard, have you heard about that? What? Yeah, there's like this. So it's like it's like totally the new flat earthers. They think that all birds are government uh, drones. drones. Well, they are. And the, now. Yeah, yeah, totally. And yeah, I've never shot or eaten a bird before. No, no. So uh, you, you you've never had quail or yeah, no, none of it. I've never eaten a single bird in my it. life. I promise, but vegetarians and vegans. Uh, so <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing. They so yeah, the, there's like this new online movement of people who swear that they haven't seen a single bird since the federal government shut down. And I'm like, I don't know that. Uh, you, I, I think they winter, should look at the. You, where do you live? They should, <laughs> they should look at the windshield in my car. Yeah. And oh god! I, and, I, and, I, and I want them to the, then say that again. Right. <laughs> Because uh, clearly my car needs a bath now. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Maybe <laughs> so, they all flew over the Mexican border for the winter. I don't know. <laughs> if we bring the birds back, do they come back? Is is that how How's it that works? Work? I think, the I think the government has to come back and then the birds come you back. It would be funny as if, as if the government shut down and we saw just an influx of birds for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, the winter's, all, the winter, winter's yeah, over. Winter, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd be the best part. So, yeah, so yeah, you were in the north, they're, right? And the winter is over. Variable and, much. Then, <laughs> and the federal government shuts down and all the birds come back. They're going to believe it. And that's just how people roll. Yeah. You know, they just believe what they, you know, yeah. it, it's just, it it's like, me. yeah, it's like third variables because like, it's, uh, it's funny. There's like stuff, uh, correlations, like, uh, in bigger cities, there's more crime or uh, my bad. Uh, I totally, I totally told you guys the third variable. It's like, if there's more churches in the city, there's more crime. It's right. like the the size of the city, uh, is the third variable there. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. and, and, and let me ask you this question. If we build the wall before summer, do the Mexican birds come back? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, we gotta put like a higher wall. I think. Like, that would be funny if they're just. Up there. I, guess, I don't know. Do that. Do the Mexican birds come? Spaceship? Huh? We got the wall. The spaceship's well, gonna you watch know, the some new, stuff. The new thing is that the uh, Mexican cartels, the, the the drug cartels, have started. Uh, carrying drugs over the border. Over the border. In, but in, in birds? No, oh, in drones. 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 Yeah. drones. Right. So, so screw, that's obvious. screw your wall. We don't right. care about your wall. We got drones now. Well, and I mean, don't get me wrong. I You, you want to build the wall? That's fine. You don't want to build the wall? That's fine. Mankind will always find a way to kind of go about mankind. What I don't want is my tax money paying for it. Yeah. If you want it funded, that's fine. But... Yeah. Maybe do a, a, a GoFundMe campaign. Oh which, my god! Are we going to talk about this? Which yeah. happened? Let's talk about this GoFundMe campaign. Look, life uh, in the words of Jeff Goldblum, life uh, life finds That's a way. way. Right? Life finds a way. Okay. It's true. Look, look. People want to fund a wall. That's fine. Right. And and I and I agree that if something like that and they're about twenty million dollars right oh, now. Oh yeah, and that type of look. Million, yeah. Yeah, which which they still need uh, what five it was five billion. Yeah, they're, 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 they're trying to get to, they're they're to a billion. They're going for one billion. Yeah. They got, they got <laughs> but a now you go for the go. full five, here's five the billion. Here's so my build problem with this. The wall. This is my only problem with this. If you want to, f- if I, I would 
prefer that our public works projects were crowdfunded. You know that. Yeah. You want to privatize everything? Crowdfund it. You want your road sucks? Get get together with your community and fix right. your damn road. It's it's cheaper, it's more efficient. You'll have better work done, and you won't have a pothole in two weeks, right? Right. But what they don't understand, these people that are crowdfunding this wall, they don't understand that that wall is going to take eminent domain to build. Yeah. Period. Ye- the government is going to have to steal property from property owners. To build that wall. A lot of people don't realize is, is a lot of this anti-immigration rhetoric uh, actually, ironic, in an almost an ironic sense, comes from Marxism. Oh, yeah. Karl Marx, uh, how do you think Karl Marx got so famous uh, selling communism? Before he wrote, wrote the Communist Manifesto, communism was around, bef- was before Karl Marx, but he defined it, right? Right. But he was a credible author at that point when he wrote the Communist Manifesto. Do you know where all of his publications uh, yeah. were on? Maybe kind of credible. I don't think he was Well, I mean, credible. he was popular uh, and people knew who he was, recognized right. the name. Right. He was actually a huge uh, anti-Irish immigrant uh, activist. He, he sure talked he about how the Irish immigrants were coming over, taking away uh, good Englishmen working jobs. Uh, and, and, the, the, the tragedy of the commons. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah absolutely. It, so it, I'm just going to throw this out there. I have no problems with any color, any race, any gender. I'm a color that's, of the how, wall. that's how every racist starts everything. That's how every racist <laughs> starts. <laughs> But what I do have a problem with is somebody just hopping over a wall and being like, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal your jobs," or "Hey, some other businessman trying to cut." Listen, if some, if some gentleman that doesn't speak English and has no formal education can steal your job, you need to go. Back you to need school. to go back to school. <laughs> so, so the reason I say that is one of my best friends is Hispanic from Mexico. Got his green card. He's been here since he was six years old. Went to college, very intelligent person. He just, he went about it the right way. Him and his family came over. They did the proper paperwork. They did what they needed to be. It's a great, great person. This is America. You, you can be anybody and anything you, you want to be. Did you put an A in front of that? Or did you just say America? America. Because you're arguing for a border wall. I'm pretty sure you're going to say America right now. Almost positive. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't help yourself. Uh, Look, here's my thing. You know, and, and, and people call me a communist all the time. I think magical lines on a map don't create a state um, and I think we sh- I think that immigration actually helps the economy and it's been proven to help the economy uh, I've been called a communist because I don't support uh, you know these crazy institutionalized borders okay. which is hilarious because if anybody in this room can name a communist country that didn't have a border right I'll give you 100 bucks right now 100 bucks right now same no you can't because communists like to keep their people in and keep other people out so that they didn't have the tragedy of the commons right yeah so it is what it is. The, you know, I I don't I don't particularly want a wall because I know walls don't just keep people out. They also keep, keep people, people in. in. Yeah, you're locking us in. Well, that's it. That's a, that's a Libertarian Counterpoint for you guys. We'll see you guys next Thursday.